Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habitu fillah The question was asked, when our iman gets low, how do you advise we turn back to Allah even though it feels hard to stay on track? Where do we start and how do we stay firm? First and foremost, habitu fillah There are some general medicines that we can take as practical steps in order to cure and deal with low iman because it's not always a matter of just curing it but it's a matter of managing and making our state of low iman go just to a, a higher level of iman so it's and it's a constant process sometimes we're low sometimes we're our iman's high you know we, we can become depressed we can have trials and tribulations in our life that can affect our mental state and our iman. And so, some of the uh, ways to treat uh, low iman, as well as going astray in general, in head off. One of the things is al is beneficial knowledge. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Man bi khayran fiddin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. So, that fiqh of deen, that gives you understanding of the religion. And obviously, with that understanding, it's not just a matter of being memorizing or understanding what you've read or what you've memorized, but it's tatbiq, it's practicing. And... <clears throat> As the Salaf used to say, al amr thamarat al alm, that uh, deeds are the the fruit of knowledge. Deeds are the fruit, the fruits of knowledge. And another saying of the of the Salaf. <laughs> Excuse me. Another saying of the Salaf, Talib al Ilm, Talib al Jannah. And seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So that means having the sincere intention while seeking knowledge. This is one of the ways to cure a sick heart because then you're practicing, you're putting it into practice. Another thing is Iman Billah, is just actualizing Tawheed. Tawheed al Ibadah, all the aspects of Tawheed. You know, Tawheed al-Rububiyya, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. Understanding the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes and supplicating to Him by His names, using those names. For example, if you require Ruz, you are asking Allah to increase your Ruz. Ya Ruzak, O Ruzak, you know, O Provider or the, the one who provides, please increase my Ruzk. Uh, and likewise, all acts of ibadah, because this is al uh, iman yazid bi ta'a wa yanqus bi masya. That iman it increases with obedience to Allah. You know, acts of obedience, following the kitab wa sunnah, and it decreases with masya with with sinfulness. Another uh, way to increase your iman is just having tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in all of your endeavors, you know, leaving your affairs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after having, or while at the same time, striving to attain whatever your goal is. For example, if you're going to try to memorize the Quran, which is an excellent deed, one of the best good deeds you can do, and understand it and practice it. That means you're reciting it, trying to memorize it, and at the same time, you're putting your heart, your full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the result that you'll memorize what you're striving to memorize. Uh, likewise, having taqwa. And that goes back to doing the good deeds because taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal, as 
the scholars mention is uh, adhering to the commandments of Allah and leaving off the prohibitions. So this is uh, taqwa. And striving to purify your intentions with all these acts, with all acts of ibadah, is that you strive to to uh, purify your intentions. The Prophet ﷺ said, in a binyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. And everyone will get that which he intended. So with that being the case, it's very important that we strive to purify our intentions. Uh, another important way to increase your iman and put it into practice and effect immediately is a dua. Wa tadarru illallah. So by supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, raising your hands, supplicating to Allah Azza wa Jal, and humbling yourself before your Lord, then this is one of the ways to increase your increase your iman. And so by supplicating as much as possible, you know, there's you don't have to worry, there's no limit. You can supplicate if you don't have wudu, you can, you know, supplicate to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't uh, sleep on that one. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your heart is in between, is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so out of his mercy, he can favor you with that guidance and open up your heart and correct your affairs or rectify your, your state, your status, and increase your iman, help you to increase your iman by you making efforts as well, acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and supplicating to him, tabarak wa ta'ala. Likewise, in addition to that, is the dhikr, making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering him often uh, and uh, <coughs> with things <coughs> as simple as subhanallah wa bahamdi subhanallah al you know, glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves to be glorified. And when you do that again, going back to the ikhlas, that you are sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're making that dhikr, and you're actually conscious of what you're saying, then you will find the thamarat, the fruit and the results of that. And so it's very important for us, and this is a good reminder for us all, to make that dhikr. And another practical way is just reading the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an, reflecting on it, uh, learning its meaning, and practicing. So all of that is a part of it as well. Likewise, establishing your Salat, never leaving your Salat, keeping your Salat. Sometimes you just find refuge just, in, in, just by going in the masjid. Especially for men, because that's where we should be. We should be praying in jama'ah. And sometimes you really feel that, that extra spiritual strength. Even you were hesitant to come to the masjid. And the shaitan was trying to chain you, and your desires were trying to keep you from going. But you really find such a, a beautiful strength and a little boost of iman from having went. And you found some peace and some... Uh, uh, serenity from having gone to the masjid so it's very important to attach your hearts to the masjid and keep your salat in general uh, also to increase your iman is all the ta'at like fasting and being conscious of your fast not just fasting you have a dry mouth and you're this and you're hungry but you want to be conscious of what you're doing remind yourself remember that, you know, this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an act of ibadah. You know, I'm seeking to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hoping that your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is, is going to accept your fast and looking forward to the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for fasting. Uh, likewise, another important practical step, which can be difficult because a lot of times really it's bottom line is our desires keep it, keep us from wanting to make toba, from making toba. Uh, 
it's our desires that stand as an obstacle that certain sins we just don't want to leave so we're attached to that sin and that's a very dangerous thing because it can drill into the heart attach itself to the heart to such an extent to leaving to uh, reaching the level of where you love the sin and at some point maybe this the shaitan deceives you to where you begin to believe it's halal you're not hurting anyone having a girlfriend is not hurting anyone it's just between you and her so you begin to think that that's 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 okay or you know i'm not committing zina i'm just watching pornography and a karmical law masturbating for example that your heart can become attached to those things because they deal with your desires and they can destroy you and you think that something like that you wonder how does something like that destroy you but it's because the mahabba the love the desire that you begin to gain for that sin you become attached to it to where you believe you can't leave it and you believe that it's a small sin. You begin to belittle the sin. Okay, well, you know, I'm not doing this. I could be doing something much worse. So you begin to justify until it spirals and it could even result in you, uh, in a person leaving the religion or loving that sin more than the deen or believing that sin is actually lawful. So there's many implications. So it shows the danger of being attached to sin, but rather you need to be attached to toba to repentance. So very important to repent. Very important to make a stagfar often on the tongue. And I would say those are some of the most important practical steps that a person can do. Likewise, another thing, a last point I want to mention is remembering death also remembering how temporary life is and reflecting on the ni'am the blessings that you have and i often reflect i think about people that i know actually someone i went to high school with who's non-muslim and uh, he just he's famous he's a famous actor he's in all kind of movies he's been on all kind of tv shows in america and this and that and the other he's working on some new film they had to remove his character because uh uh you know he just had a stroke SubhanAllah, same age as me, you know, we're in high school together, you know, I don't feel that I'm that old, so, <laughs> you know, but, I, and I reflect on many people that I've known who have died of cancer, a lot of people from high school, good friend of mine who was in Jahiliya, we used to, you know, was a good companion, and those things remind me, my beloved uh, companion who died last year, three wives, we were in Yemen together, you know, same age as me. So you don't know. We're not guaranteed another minute. So by reflecting on death and the blessings that you have, you know, and and also the ni'am that you have, the ni'am, the blessing of freedom, the blessing of rizq, the blessing of your health, those are all great na'mas. I reflect often also on another brother who I know from Islam. So we have many years together as Muslims. And he's in prison for life. And he's a good, he's a good brother. He's not like, he wasn't a drug dealer. He wasn't into a lot of stuff. He wasn't into things. He was a family man. Had wives, multiple children. But he was a good, at one point he was the imam for us. You know, we grew up together in the dean, the same age. But when I look at his picture on the internet, life in prison, I can't imagine what that would be to have my you know, he can't see his children unless they come to visit him. He's, he's, it's life. You know, there's no, you know, it's life without parole. He doesn't have any action really to get out, no matter how many times he keeps appealing. I just make dua that Allah frees him because I know him. He's a good, he made a mistake. And it's an understandable mistake, but the, the way the condition, the circumstances were very bad. Defending his family, more or less, and his honor, and he, he took another person's life, and I know this individual. He's not a uh, criminal-minded person, but those circumstances got him caught up, and he made foolish decisions, and this is his result. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free him and bless him. So by reflecting on the na'mah, when I reflect, when I have difficult, di difficult days on my job or difficult days in my iman, 
I, I reflect on those things. I say, subhanAllah, Allah favored me to continue. I mean, I'm able to do a little da'wah, have my books, I, you know, have my life and family and this, my health's okay and this and that and the other. So you have to reflect on those things. And those things will help strengthen your iman. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.